they think what I mean. What is going on my brodies? It is Andrew of Beta AT Production and Publishing bringing you guys a brand new YouTube video. In this YouTube video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you guys can mix a hard hitting money bag yo type of trap beat or if you're working with just that southern trap sound, how do you mix your beats so they hit hard and still have room in the mix. So I have a beat here. I actually did everything. So kind of what I'm going to do is deconstruct it and show you guys exactly uh, how I did it, what my techniques usually are, and how you guys can uh, do it. And most of these principles should apply to any DAW. Uh, obviously, I'm in FL Studio 12.4, so you guys might have a newer or older version of FL, or you guys might be on Ab Ableton, or you might be on Pro Tools. It doesn't matter uh, the same principles apply and majority of these plugins you guys can get or use similar versions so I'm gonna go ahead and play this uh, hopefully we don't have any CPU issues if we do I will disable my master bus but yeah <laughs> So that was the beat, uh, it kind of just loops over so there's no point for me really to keep playing it because like I said it just loops over. Let me readjust this. Um, so going through it, I guess we can go over each, I'll go through each element real quick to show you what it is. The bit, I would like to preface that uh, the big thing is, is if you have bad samples or bad sounds or bad drum kits or just weak sounding drums it will require you to do more work in the mix to bring them out so having quality samples is a good step um, how do you know if you have quality samples well part of that is having good speakers knowing what you're listening for um, do an a b test with a professional record and your record so uh, the first element I have, <clears throat> I don't mean to sidetrack again, but if you guys want quality samples, go over to beatitat.com. Uh, that's the website that I run. Uh, link will be uh, down in the description down below. I will also include some of my personal favorite drum kits off of the website. We are running a whole month sale for December. So if you guys need to upgrade your samples for the new year, this would be a good time to do so. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. We're gonna go from left to right. We're gonna just go over each sample in here. So I have this E piano. If I turn off everything, 
That's what it sounds like if I turn on the gross beat. So we start getting that bouncy rhythmic like warping effect. That's just with random uh, effects on gross beat. Then I did a double lock, which is by Sound Toys. It adds more grit and texture to it. That's That was exactly what I was looking for when I was uh, working on this beat. I, I felt like just with the gross beat, it would be too, um, it, it would be too plain. And if I were to put it on an EQ, then after the gross beat, then it's gonna sound more plain. So I wanted to add a little bit of texture and uh, saturation with uh, a little bit of distortion. EQ to clean it up a bit. I uh, cut off the low, uh, lowered that mid, and then boosted in the high a bit. I want it to be heard, but I don't want it to clash with the 808s. So, here's this, uh, it's like a piano warping from Omnisphere. Just some bell plinks. I wanted to trim down this area because it was so loud and piercing. So with everything. Having only like three melodic elements uh, other than the 808, which we haven't got to yet, but those three melodic elements, make sure there's a lot of room. I'm not having no pads. Uh, pads cloud up your mix. Uh, you wouldn't really need pads for um, a money bag, yo, trap type of beat. But if you guys are ever wondering, there's a lot of uh, elements and things that you can have in your track that will cloud it up. So whenever you're adding stuff, start muting stuff and see if it's really worth it or not. So the next thing is I have a kick. I also mono my kick by just bringing that stereo separation from all the way down instead of from there, brought it all the way down. Uh, kick, I lowered that bass kinda, cause I really want the kick to be heard in the upper, I mean in the mid. Uh, upper mid and low mid and then I personally like putting sound goodizer on my kick because it really gives a thump so if we without it you see how quiet it sounds or uh, it doesn't have that compression punch to it because I mean sound goodizer is just a uh, dry and wet knob for a maximizer um, you can see what it's doing if you were to pull up your um uh maximus they have the settings of uh the different sound goodizer a b c and d in there so if you are curious to know what they're doing check that out but i just i keep it you know about over 50 percent just has a lot more thump to that kick with the clap just a little bit of a boost I like to have my kick as the loudest element. Um, when you guys see the 808, the 808 sits uh, around the levels of the melodies. The 808 is covering that whole low bass, so there's really nothing competing against it. Uh, there's some uh, sound harmonics that are kind of in its space uh, with everything, but for the most part, nothing's really competing with that 808. So the 808 doesn't need to be super, super loud. Louder the 808 is, more room it's going to take up in our mix. And we'll get to the 808 shortly. So here's a hi-hat. I always pull my hi-hat down. Uh, usually I mono it, but uh, I didn't mono it for this one. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't make a huge difference. Um, sometimes it's just preference uh, for this one though this hi-hat worked how it was all that really needed to be done to it was uh just a little bit of leveling because if it was uh at the default where you could see these faders are at it'd just be a hair too loud and pretty annoying you can see in relation uh to the kick and clap kick is just a hair higher than a clap clap will probably be just a hair higher than the 808 
the clap and snare or snap whatever you have on that uh four beat i guess it's a four beat or two beat regardless every like one fourth note uh it's keeping the rhythm the the kick uh gives the heartbeat to the track the clap is clap snare snap or keeping the tempo of the track hi-hat is kind of adding that energy uh, 808 is adding the life because it's the bass and you can actually feel it and then the melody you know uh, the higher it provides more of a harmonic element or melodic element to the song open hat you just kind of you want it to be a little bit more present than a hi-hat but not over the top than the clap or uh kick then coming into the 808 i did a little bit of camel crusher which i believe is a free plugin um but this plugin is amazing for uh distortion compression then i did i focused heavy in that low a little bit in the mid and then i rolled it off uh a lot of mixing with the 808 is also just about having a good 808 and then tuning it correctly uh all of our 808 samples over at b to at we always make them uh c or very close to c uh, for, so it makes tuning really easy and uh, and we also do a lot of different compressions and distortions to our 808s so they all have different uh sonic textures but uh while they are still uh mimicking a lot of the more popular 808s that you're hearing in today's uh hip-hop and pop trap music so continuing on we got this percussion i don't really have any panning that's the one thing that i could have done on this but uh panning it for me is just a personal preference uh, you don't really need to worry too much about panning uh for creating space if you're good with mixing if you kind of get by panning uh sometimes it's a mixing element sometimes it's a creative element uh so the one thing that you do see oh and i forgot to mention for the clap kick and 808 as well as uh this hat over here i did mono all of those um my apologies i forgot about that um i just you want to mono your bass and kick there's no point for those to be stereo they're going to use up a lot of space in the uh, Spread, stereo spreading that is just it would be pretty weird um i would not suggest it i've seen people w widen their 808 there's no real reason for that in my opinion but uh you just need a little bit of eqing and compression <laughs> So here's like a shaker and then this is like more of like a percussion hit like dun dun. So right here for this hi-hat we have it drilling a little bit uh, more but I didn't want it to it's going back to that space and sound and how much sound is using up the space in the mix. I didn't want it to clash with the other uh, upper frequency harmonics or the other hi-hats and if it was louder it would definitely be clashing it could even you can even make an argument that's clashing right now but i wanted it because it adds that other level uh the next level of uh, energy more drill there's less empty space um Part, and part of the way that I do my beat uh, layout is that I like to take away elements. So in the chorus, which that's what we're looping right now, if we look, my pattern one has all my elements. That's my chorus. But then throughout the verse, I simplify it by cutting out d different elements, whether that be cutting out the kick, cutting out certain percussion elements, cutting out certain melodic elements. So that's the way that uh, because if i just kept it like how i have pattern one all the way throughout the whole song that's just like a that's just a loop that's a very boring thing to listen to um but a lot of industry producers also keep their beats kind of like loops because uh if they land that placement they'll send out the track outs and then the engineer will mix things up take things out change it around and it allows the artist the most uh control uh, me on the other hand i like I like constructing the beat out. I like making it formulaic, but that's besides the point. Um, this is actually from a Young Coke 
uh, sample pack. This is just big impact. Same with this percussion. This is like a like a baseball bat percussion. Then I have my producer tag, which is just some default te uh, template. I could really pull this down, but. And that's everything, but I will turn off my master. So if you want to hear what it sounds like without my master, it sounds like this. It's a lot more space. Uh, it's an, because mostly with my mastering, I did uh, stereo imaging, and then I did compression. And I'll get into that in a second. I didn't do anything with the limiter. The limiters aren't there just to round stuff off or just to limit it down. Here's a, a little uh, EQ band for the master. Free up that low. The low mid is... There's a lot of yuckiness, that 300 frequencies. It's just never good. So I'm going to just clean it up by doing a little bit of a cut right there. A hair of a bump in the 1700. And then a hair of a bump in like the 130. So, and then I slope it down at the uh, bottom, bottom, and top, top. So Sanky Dizer, it's just really doing a little bit of a saturation uh, compression. If I turned it on or off, you wouldn't really notice a huge difference. You can notice a difference, but like I said, it's something very small. Whereas when we turn on the Ozone 8. There's a huge difference with Ozone 8. So what am I doing in Ozone 8? Doing a, a, a slight EQ boost and a low, but as like you can see, it's very, very slight. Then I'm doing a bit of a multi-band uh, compression. Let me turn it, everything off for y'all. Really, for the multiband, I'm trying to balance all the harmonics. Nothing sounds too much. Uh, obviously, I mean, I could spend more time on it and perfect it. But the thing is, this is on the master chain. If someone buys the track outs to this or we have to send it out to an artist to, for their session, they wouldn't even be using the master. They would reference maybe this uh, master track. But what they'll do is put all the track outs in. And when I bounce it in FL Studio, this master track does not apply to all the track outs. If that makes sense. Like this is, if you were to track this out, it will track out the master bus, which is this, which has every, these, uh, o, for the EQ, Sound Good Desert, Ozone, and Limiter. That's the master bus. It'll bounce the current bus, which is usually just the master bus again. And then it'll bounce out all these other track stems, which will not have whatever's on the master bus. So that's also a note for y'all. If you guys ever put a filter on your master bus and then someone gets the track outs, it will not have the filter on it. The only thing that will have the filter on it is the master track. I'm sorry if this is very confusing, but if you guys just bounce the track outs, you guys will see what I mean. Um, so, but besides the point, I'm trying to just tame it. So whenever I do send like MP3 leases out or upload it to YouTube or whatever, people can actually hear like the final sounding beat in some sense. Uh, it'll sound cleaner probably with some vocals on it, but, uh, I digress. Uh, so here, just doing, I have the highs pretty, uh, I'm doing a gain in the highs because I'm pulling a lot of it down with a, a harsh compression ratio. More of the ratio I have and more I pull it down, more it's going to try to bring the lows and highs down. Uh, so, whereas up here, I, I I didn't need to do a whole bunch of a gain because I'm not really bringing much down. I'm just trying to pull, essentially limit the volume down. 
this is my very uh very very uh elementary uh explanation of this i'm sure some professional or pro out there is probably pulling his hair at this but you guys can see like the gain right here 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 and here i'm only pulling it up a decent bit over here cause my ratio is higher and i'm actually doing more with the compression the low mid i kind of want to get rid of anyways because the vocal is going to be sitting uh between like six seven hundred to like 4k so vocal will be right around here so i need to make sure there's room in there so coming into the imaging i never image vocals at least i don't anymore i used to but i will do stereo imaging on a beat vocals should always be in the center unless if you're doing backing or uh, support vocals layer vocals i get it then you might do some layer imaging but for the beat uh, i stereoized it i spread the width out in the mid part to fill it up and then i monoed the uh low bass area uh a decent bit then i kind of monoed or uh, brought in the width on the high end because we have those hi hats and percussion elements there's not much of a point to spread those um a little bit of a spread right here because we still got melodic elements but most of our melodic elements are going to be in here since we don't have vocals it's fine and it's going to allow us to create uh fill in more space maximizer And then finally, doing uh, mastering limiting just to crunch it back up, to crunch it back up and make sure there's uh, little to no em uh, empty space, uh, maximizing the potential loudness. We might got, we might have gotten a little bit of distortion, a little bit, of, not necessarily uh, clipping, but um, it might be a little too hot in the mix, but like i said we just need it to get close enough where the artist can understand what the final sounding version of this beat is because once we send out the track outs and they make a track with the track outs uh we just want to have that we want to give that mixing and mastering recording engineer a guideline of where we see this beat sounding when it's done so yeah that's pretty much it uh this should cover it all i wasn't really going to go over the structuring of this uh, I just wanted to go over the mix and master and how you guys can achieve a mix and master. If you guys want to get Ozone 8, I'll put the link to Ozone 8 down in the, desc the description down below. Um, you guys can get Ozone 9 as well, um, whichever works for you. Uh, they may not even be selling Ozone 8 anymore because they're pushing Ozone 9. I don't currently have Ozone 9. For me, there's not much of a point to upgrade from 8 to 9 as of right now. But, um, yeah. But if you don't have Ozone 8 or any Ozone, then I recommend getting Ozone 9. Uh, just for me, there's not much of a difference between 8 and 9. So, this is Andrew of b -A -T, Production and Publishing, and I will see you guys later. Hopefully this was helpful. If you need the links to the software, drum kits, samples, I will put the links to everything in the description down below.